a total nightmare. I am worse than a nightmare because you can wake up from a nightmare. I will just continue to haunt you. Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> it's Saturday here. Um, by the time it gets uploaded, it'll be Sunday. And I planned on coming back Monday. But I was looking through some of my older videos and... One of them caught my eye that I'd kind of forgotten about. It only has a 410 views, but it is some of my best work, you guys, to be honest. At least I think so. And it has eight commercials in it. So um, my husband's going to slice uh, the beginning chapter, and then we're going to do that for the middle, and then I'm going to have the end chapter. So he's going to put the beginning and the end on. So it's going to be kind of cool in a way because... It'll be like looking back in time, except it's only four months ago. <laughs> but yeah, I figured um, I would put that on because it is fantastic, I think. It's one, I, I do, I, I sincerely do, or I wouldn't do this for sure. So anyways, I'm still going to do what I normally do, which is uh, my stuff's in chapter form. After each chapter, we get a commercial, which is anything I find funny. So we're going to be in for, I think, 10 commercials breaks, you guys. This is going to be fun, and I'm doing this just for you guys to say thank you, happy Easter, just, you know, because I love you. <laughs> okay, let's just get to it. Well, is this <clears throat> something? True or not, I don't even care. <laughs> and there is a major truth in this chapter, though. So I got one where if it's true, awesome. If it's not... I don't care. It's awesome. It's out there. And then some real truth, guys. Okay, so look at this. It, I just wrote on top. Is Rachel getting a taste of her own medicine? Meghan Markle's facelift. Um, I had to black that a little bit. Unveiled in Jamaica premiere. <laughs> what? A shocking revelation has emerged regarding Meghan Markle's alleged facelift. Before I go further, let's all know this is alleged. Um, came to my email and, uh, yeah, I'm just reading it out to you guys. So, Cali Beauty Doctor suggests that the Duchess may be older than she claims. Details have surfaced about Megan's attempt to conceal her facelift surgery scars using oversized earrings, sparking controversy and speculation. During the world premiere of the Bob Barley biop, Biopic, One Love in Kingston, Jamaica, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry made a stylish appearance. Meghan donned a black ensemble consisting of a bodysuit paired with a skirt, that big hoopla skirt there, <laughs> complemented by a Jimmy Choo clutch. However, the focus was on her choice of gold disc earrings from Jennifer Meyer. Crafted from exquisite 18 karat gold, mounted on delicate airwaves, or wires, sorry. <laughs> Critics have raised eyebrows at Megan's accessory choice, drawing comparisons to Kim Kardashian's style of using oversized rings to divert attention from plastic surgery. Observers suggest that Megan might be employing a similar tactic, evident from her deliberate choice of earrings and a seemingly overly long dress aiming to shift focus away from her facial features. Social media buzzed with candid comments about Megan's appearance, speculating on various cosmetic procedures like Botox, fillers, and more. The scorching <laughs> Jamaican heat reportedly affected Rochel's bronzer, leading to noticeable changes in her facial features, including plump lips, a wide grin, and sharply arched eyebrows, which some critics deemed unnatural for her age. Discussions delved into the complexities of maintaining a natural look while undergoing cosmetic enhancements, touching on factors like alcohol consumption and harsh diets that could accelerate aging. Huh. Imagine that. Personal antidotes and insights were shared, shedding light on the nuances of cos cosmetic interventions and the impact they can have on one's appearance. 
So I just wanted to show you guys, uh, some might have seen, might some might have, some might have forgotten of some of these ridiculous photos <laughs> of Mar This is the one of the worst I've ever seen. I'm going to go through a couple and then I'll have a quick chat. <laughs> like, the difference is extraordinary, right? Like, the bottom is, is her Photoshop and the rest isn't. So I've been the one who put all these together, guys, just so you know. Yeah, <laughs> me and my lovely stickers. <laughs> okay, just for a quick second. Now, what do you guys think of that little tidbit? <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I read it online. I was like, what? Oh, my God. So apparently there's a breach of medical records, if that's what's going on. Um... I read somewhere else about a breach of her record. So I was wondering, is this true? <laughs> is it true? And if it is, holy crap, well, you know what? I don't feel sorry for her. Hate to say it, but I don't. But if it is true, <laughs> or if it isn't, sorry, I don't even care. I'm just, ha I just think it's hilarious that it's out there. So that's what, regard, here's the thing, guys, right? When so many people out there will believe anything they read, right? That's why I said to you guys right away, I don't know if this is true or not, because I'm not going to believe everything I read. But the reason I bring it to you guys is because stuff like this is out there, and that would drive her mad. <laughs> to have people thinking she had a face <laughs> Which, allegedly, in my opinion, I think she probably has. <laughs> I'm serious. I am serious, you guys. But that's in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> I got to say that stuff now, I guess. Yeah. So I think that's hilarious. And I don't feel one bit sorry for her. Oh, no, I don't. So let's get to the actual true stuff. This is amazing, you guys. So these are going to look crooked because they're screenshots somebody grabbed. But look at this. This is uh Thomas Sr., you guys. Someone says, what do you, he was being interviewed. I don't know where this is from. I don't know what year this is from, but it's a screenshot from P. Dinna's channel. And um somebody put it online and I could not believe it. So I'm just going to read you. What do you believe about the theories or the rumors about her having a surrogate and not really having the children physically? So he says, well, the bottom line, I know for a fact that she had frozen her eggs and had planned to come back. Holy moly, you guys. And like I said, it's a screenshot somebody put online, but I mean, obviously... P. Dinna grabbed it a million, I don't even know how long ago, but kudos to her. And she'd come back to get her eggs. I'm assuming she had Archie. I don't know if he's assuming that, you guys, and that's just what she, he's saying, because I know for a fact that he also said that she had a hysterectomy. So he threw in, but he, actually his wording is good, though. Never mind about that. Because, well, I guess she she had Archie in a different way is what he's saying, right? If she come back to get the eggs, I guess. Oh, no, listen to this. Physically, she had Archie herself with her frozen eggs, maybe. He goes, I'm guessing, I guess, yeah. But look, his face, his eyes are turned down. He's lying. He's lying, you guys, because we all know that he said she had a hysterectomy. So that's bollocks. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't say stuff like that, I guess, anymore. But yeah, so this is just crazy. But one thing's for sure. Like, why would he, doesn't he think, I'm just thinking about this right now. Doesn't he think about how insane that really sounds? If she's fine and supposedly having her own child, why are her eggs frozen? And she's supposedly younger and stuff. Huh? Okay, that... You guys, I just literally thought of that right now. How dumb that sounds. No wonder that person said, asked that. Physically, as she had Archie self with her own frozen eggs. What? What? Okay. That's all kinds of wrong right there. <laughs> 
That's why I do this, you guys, because we need to see this stuff and realize that not everybody's telling the truth here. There's a lot of lying going around, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so I'm going to put on a couple commercials, and then what's going to happen, it's just going to segue into the meat of the video, which is her own diary in her own words. And if you have seen this before, you will have not seen it the way I do it. I promise you that. Because there's clips, there's, oh my God, funnies. Like I have like eight chapters, so there's lots of funnies. And um, I go through every couple pages and dissect it. It's absolutely crazy. It's going into the mind of a mad woman. That's literally what we're going to do. So um, I'm going to, yeah, do this. And then the ending will be me again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy everything, and I will see you in a few minutes. It's so, so sad today that the queen has died. This one time, I almost died, so I really relate. <laughs> it was this huge fire on the 25th room of my mansion. I wasn't in there at the time, but it was very scary. The queen, she was so inspirational, and I really related to her because I'm often described as really inspirational all the time. She was also so strong. You could say that we were both just acting throughout our lives, except I was the way more successful actress. <laughs> but now she's above us amongst the stars, kind of like how I am in Hollywood. So similar. Yeah, um, I hope I can inspire you to attend your multi-billionaire grandmother-in-law's <laughs> funeral, because if I can, you can. Tomorrow, I will be getting on my private jet to attend the anti-pollution summit uh -huh. in Canada. Um, but obviously, I won't be leaving yet until the wills are announced. It's a shame I can't leave right now, but Judy calls, so I'll, I'll wait for that will. <laughs> What happened at brunch, Harry? There was one Sunday morning brunch mm -hmm. where somebody broke wind. Ooh. And it was awful. Ooh. Growing up, there was a rule in the house, whoever smelt it, dealt it. Mm -hmm. And whoever denied it, supplied it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the phrase. They were all looking at M. And it was helpful <laughs> to presume that it was my wife. Okay, but who was it? Was it Megan? Yes, yes, it was her brand. <laughs> but... To presume that. All right, but it was her. She farted. She had eaten the taco the night before. <laughs> Ugh. But I just don't see how this is very traumatic. I think there was a real sense of unconscious bias because she was new and an imposter to the family. Huh, Harry, did you just fart? I did. Oh, yeah, <laughs> silence, but deadly. Oh, Jesus. Ginger and spicy. It's my brand. Oh. So we need to modernize the conversation. Oh. And I love my brother. I, I know, I know, I know. My family. <laughs> we are going to go through this. Uh, the Daily Mail printed it. We're going to go through each and every one of them. Because they're shocking. And yeah, we're just going to do it the way I normally do it. And have fun. And just be shocked. Because you guys, we were right. We were right all along. And I don't know how come this has not come up. But I want it to be out there and I want everybody to know so you can just share my video with people. I don't care. Just let them all know. Anyways, now, in her own words, printed in the public domain six years ago, MM's detailed plan execution to bag a prince. Yes, you guys. She literally wrote it out. No joke. So let's get to this. It's actually by a mutual friend. Who um, we will? We should protect her privacy. Protect and her privacy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was definitely yes. a setup. <laughs> it was a blind date. It was a blind date. And, sure. and it's so interesting because we talk about it. Megan and I met over Instagram. I was scrolling through my feed, and uh, someone who was a friend had this video of the two of them, it was like a Snapchat. Oh, um, gosh. Isn't that whole thing? It's serious, like, dog ears. Dog ears. That's what he saw of me. Who is it? And she said, it's Prince Has. And I said, who's that? I asked if I could see his feed. That's so that's the thing. When people say, do you Google him? No. But I, that's your homework. You're like, hmm, look, let me see what they're about in their feed. I've never looked up my husband online. I just didn't feel a need to because I you know he was sharing with me, right? 
Okay, so I showed that so that you guys kind of, you know, well, I already know you know, but you know what I mean? Like, there's three different stories they threw out there, but the truth is right here in front of our faces all along. It's actually... I'm, it's staggering, actually. So what I decided to do was I just screenshot the mail um, online, and it's going to be just as you see it, because that's exactly how I got it. And this was on June 30th of 2017, July 1st, and June 6th of 2016. Um, it says... Well, it says here, will he or won't he? A year after she met Harry, Meghan Markle's very revealing diary and what she really thinks of their romance. Honest. And then June 6th, something awesome has happened. I was introduced to this super cool guy in Toronto. He has the cutest English accent and a naughty smile. It's bad news. He has ginger hair. Good news. He's just about the most eligible dude in the world. All right, so we're going to go through this, you guys, and prepare to be, uh, uh, well, shocked and, and to prepare to go. I bloody well knew it. Okay, it says, yep, Prince Harry, and we all know there's only one way to catch a prince. Pretend you don't know who he is. This is all her, by the way, you guys. This is her words, okay, that I'm reading out. The, the um, <clears throat> Mail Online, Daily Mail Online printed it. And I don't know how it got missed. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but this is literally her diaries. I don't know how they got them, how it worked out. I don't have a clue. But all I know is they didn't sue. She didn't sue them, so it has to be true. Or she would have sued them. Anyways, okay. I'm just quite excited about this. It's just shocking to me. <laughs> And we all know there's only one way to catch a prince. Pretend you don't know who he is. It worked. And then he pretended he watched my TV show Suits. Ha ha. Anyway, we've been texting for days and soon I'm flying to London to see him again. He says I've got to keep it top secret. Huh. Okay. June 28th. I'm in London to meet my new man. I know I have to keep it under my hat, but it's killing me. I'm doing my best to be good and even hid in the back of a car when I went to see him. No one suspected anything. Damn it. On the plus side, I got to watch tennis at Wimbledon too. Okay, not in the Royal Box this year, but maybe next year. After all, if they can keep making room for that Pippa. Pippa who? She has nothing on me. So what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm separating these uh, pages because there is something in each one of them that needs to be addressed. I'm not even kidding. Like every two or three pages. So um, that's how I'm doing it. Anyway, I was like, why? Why? What, what's going on with Pippa? So I went looking and this is what I found. So I'm assuming you guys from Britain know about this. I kind of remember this a little bit. And it says reports of a romance between Pippa Middleton and Prince Harry delighted fans. I believe this was after um, the wedding of uh, Prince William and Catherine. So then I saw this and I was like, oh my God, are you kidding? Pippa and Harry caught snogging in a bathroom? What? <laughs> Even had it in the OK magazine, world exclusive, Pippa and Prince Harry caught. So basically, there was rumors and stuff, I guess, about Pippa and Prince Harry, and that's why me again had her panties in a knot. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have a commercial. <laughs> Just Meghan here, Princess HRH, Princess Markle with a crown on top, celebrating my win at Mail on Sunday and the trash tabloids because they invaded my privacy by publishing the letter to my father, whom I call daddy. And I know people have said, well, Megan, you did say it could be leaked. And I did. And I know I told my comms guy that I used the word daddy, so that if it was leaked, that it would pull on people's heartstrings. But at no time did I ever think that letter would actually be leaked because I'm just so busy being like a princess and a royal with so many duties. I mean, like I don't do any duties, but if I did, I know they would be hard. It's basically like, I'm like basically the queen, but with like better hair extensions. This is me dressed down, as you can see, because I'm one of the people, one of the little people. 
And this little pinky ring here, this was given to me by an Arab in the <laughs> Middle East. I'm not sure why. And it's worth like 30 billion gazillion dollars, but I'm still so dressed down. I think we can all agree that, can't we? Uh -huh. But like I say, I'm a very private person. And that's why I had to go and explain that <laughs> on Oprah and also The Ellen Show and also on Netflix because I'm so private. I needed to go on those global platforms to explain just how private I am. <laughs> and I know people have been saying that I said I didn't get involved in the book Finding Freedom that briefed against everybody except me and H and made us look fabulous. And in fact, <laughs> they totally did and gave entire briefing notes. But that was just like a momentary lapse in concentration because of course it's so hard being African-American woman of colour and also a princess and also a royal with duties. And people say to me all the time, Megan, what do you keep in your club? And I say to them, well, Inside here is Harry's testicles. <laughs> I love Katie. <laughs> okay, Operation Bag Myself a Prince. To start, look hot, practice my curtsy, and research British upper middle class. Okay, so back to the diary. July 15th. We've been dating over a month now, and Harry is worried people might be on to us, so I'm trying to throw people off the scent with my Instagram posts. Fries before guys, as if, not when that guy is fifth in line to the throne and you don't stay as skinny as I am eating chips, as the Brits call them. I'm really going to have to learn that lingo. July 17th, Operation Bag Myself a Prince. So far, so good. But our romance is still secret and we're on opposite sides of the Atlantic. I worry some blonde totty, as Harry calls them, will swoop in and steal my man. I've got to get the message across that I'm chilled out. They say Harry's so not into commitment. I don't want to scare him off. So I uploaded this fun snap of me with raspberries. Come on, what's not to love? August 6th, in New York for my best friend's wedding. Thankfully, the hotel rooms look a little like a palace, so I can get used to how my future home might be. I'd give anything if I could take Harry as my plus one. But I can still drive him wild from here. Just check out my butt. <laughs> That'll show him it isn't just that Middleton girl who looks great from behind in a bridesmaid dress. In your face, Pippa. Wow, you can you what guys even believe this? Like, I'm not even joking. Like, isn't this just uh, mind-blowing? Oh, it just gets even better, you guys. Oh, yes. September 1st, I've decided to research the British upper class. So while I'm working hard on my lifestyle blog, The Tig, jetting around the world, staying at really cool, expensive hotels, trust me, it's exhausting, I make sure to look up some posh Brits. I hung out with a socialite called Millie McIntosh at Soho Farmhouse in the Cotswolds. She was super helpful and taught me all about English ways, the importance of queuing, handwriting thank you notes rather than Instagramming, that it's loo, not toilet, and napkin, not serviette. I took notes. Very useful for meeting the future granny-in-law. Oh, my God. So this is that girl that she was on the bicycle with. And she basically totally dropped her. She cut me dead, she said, <clears throat> as soon as she uh, was with Harry. Never heard from her again. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. What I read from that message was she may needed a bit of space. So I didn't message her again. And she basically told me to F off. That's what she said. So I, I'm probably missing a couple of things. You, got, you guys can uh, screenshot it if you like. But she got basically an icy response as soon as she was done with her see you later shocker september 2nd <clears throat> jetting back home today and it's been a crazy month of fun or of sun sand and you know what but it's still hush hush that's 11 long weeks i guess at least it's given me time to practice my curtsy okay but deep down, I'm over the whole secret thing. Now, everyone thinks he's dating some other actress called Jenna Coleman, who's in some little TV thing call about Queen Victoria. Yawn. At least my show is sexy. All right, then. 
everyone, I've got some fantastic news to share with you all today. I'm delighted to announce that my wife and I have landed an amazing multi-year deal to produce television programmes for Netflix. <laughs> Apparently it's worth about £75 million, which I thought was a pretty good pay packet. <laughs> but when I told Gran, she called it chump change. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not absolutely sure what Netflix is. Some internet charity for people who can't get on the real television. <laughs> But they do seem to have a lot of money, so I'm very happy to film some stuff for them on my phone. Funny thing is, we don't even own a TV set at the moment. My wife put her foot through the screen after she saw her sister slagging her off again on some news programme. Anyway, I'm very excited about this big Neptunes project. Sorry, not Neptunes. What are they called? Netpod? Neptune? Net trash? Whatever. It doesn't matter. The important thing is they've got cash to burn. I don't really know what I'm doing, but luckily my wife's an expert in producing television. She had a starring role acting in the drama series Suits, which she tells me won many awards, received huge critical acclaim, and is still widely regarded as the best TV programme of all time. And it definitely wasn't cancelled due to poor viewing figures. After Suits finished, apparently she was offered multiple leading roles in major Hollywood films, that she says she mistakenly turned down to marry me and that I should be fucking grateful and just take my beatings like a man and get back in the cupboard under the stairs before she cuts me again. I don't know what sort of TV programmes we're going to make exactly, neither does Netflix, but I do know that they're going to be fantastically worthy and progressive. And my role in the whole process will simply be to do what I'm told and try not to get hit. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. I'm loving the new house in Santa Barbara. Life is good right now, guys. And even if it wasn't, my wife's burned my passport, so I can't leave anyway. I love him. <laughs> so this one, score princess points. Pretend to be a humanitarian and still look hot. September 28th. Okay, so we have established that I am discreet, dress well, and know that you should say rubbish, not garbage. Tick, tick, tick. Now I'm in Ottawa posing for Vanity Fair magazine for my humanitarian work with the One Young World Organization. It's all about environmental issues and human rights and stuff. So that's got to be worth some serious princess points, right? I try to seem regal and dignified for the cameras. Also, how hot do I look in my white dress? Holy cow, you guys. That is inside a crazy woman's mind. She totally does not get it whatsoever. It's all an act for her. All of it. So I'm just going to show some pictures of what she did to... This was all planned, you guys. This was all planned. So that she could look like a humanitarian in front of just Harry. And that she loved Africa and all this... Well, crap, because she didn't. She Has she been to Africa since? No. Right? Has she done any humanitarian work? No. But she had to go and look like her, his mom, didn't she? And then there was this one, Meghan Markle, humanitarian and global citizen. Like, ugh. It drives me nuts, you guys, that this is fake. Like, she's faking all of this. It's just unbelievable, you know? Yep. Fakety, fake, fake. She uses these kids as like a prop. Legit. It's just unreal. And the kids in the back there, they don't look so thrilled. Ugh. I don't know about you guys, but that just doesn't even look appropriate, does it? Like, why? Look, look at those poor children. Why would she have this big ass grin on her face? Like, you know, you can smile, but this just looks inappropriate to me. And there she is, once again. Props, that's all these kids are to her. If she really, really cared, why didn't she go back? Why hasn't she gone back? Like, realistically, she can go anywhere she wants. Why hasn't she gone there? I know Harry would love it. Totally. She totally lied to him. Of course, this ridiculousness. Like, okay. 
So, October 19th, a big day, the launch of my new clothing line based on the sort of smart, sexy clothes my character Rachel wears in suits. Think tight leather and sky-high stilettos. It's important for a modern woman to diversify her career, and it's even more important for a certain someone to see what a hot body I've got. Oh, my God. Okay, I've had it. My jaw is aching from staying so quiet, so I've started to drop a few hints. I really can't believe nobody's guessed we're an item. I must be a better actress than I thought. So I posted this cheeky little snap, drinking my coffee in a pose, which also just happens to show me wearing Harry's African love bead bracelet. Just hope someone picks up on it. So now we know she definitely does this, guys. This, like, you know, we already knew, but, you know, like, she, this is just her admitting it, right? Like, that she does this kind of thing for people to talk, for people to notice, all that stuff. Like, holy crap, it's just something else to see, though. Uh-oh, I'm hearing rumors that the story of our romance is about to break. Hope it's nothing I did. It's all about to get crazy at last. Oh, this is October 22nd. Okay. So in the meantime, here's a silly card I bought for my own little pickle in the palace, saying you mean a great deal to me. Hilarious. I try to stay suitably mysterious in my caption on Instagram. Just saying, yes, you do. We all know who you is, don't we? And I only put two love hearts after it. How restrained am I? Me trying to get through Meghan Markle's podcast. <laughs> No kidding, eh? <laughs> Shirts and some pants. I just need this by the end of tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, you want me to separate the white and the color? <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> to separate the white clothes and the color clothes. <laughs> That's disgusting. The problem? What's the problem? That is so hurtful. You're part of the problem. You know that. I don't know. I can take the whites. I can do bleach and make it white. Bleach? So they can be more white? It's disgusting. You mix with the color, it turn red. You don't want uh, Oh, well, not only is it to get M, it's to get me. It's because I'm a ginger. You don't want it to turn red. Who cares? It turn red, it turn pink. You don't want that. You don't want that. That's so hurtful. And I love my brother, and I love my family, and I love my clothes. Okay, yeah. it's your choice. You don't want, you love your clothes, you don't want. We need to modernize the conversation. You want me to starch? Oh. I can just imagine, like, uh, Prince William and everybody feeling like that when they're around just Harry. <laughs> okay, so the cat's out of the bag. I wonder how that happened. Huh. November 1st. Yikes. So the whole world knows that Harry and I are bananas about each other. The royals say, never complain, never explain. But there's nothing that says never post cute internet pics that could be read as a romantic message for your prince, is there? So that's what I do and post a naughty little message for my guy on Instagram telling him to sleep tight. Yep, that's right. I've spooned with Prince Harry, just like these bananas are doing. After all, he's so appealing. Oh, God. Then it goes to November 10th. Success. Harry put out the sweetest statement confirming we are totally an item and defending me from all the mean things some people are saying. He's my knight in shining armor, except he's better than a knight because he's a prince. Decided to cook him a special romantic de meal at Kensington Palace to show my appreciation. An organic vegan feast using my special favorite recipe for roasted cauliflower with chickpeas and hot curry powder. He's gonna love it. So there she is saying she's vegan. Okay, what about all those uh, chicken dinners or whatever? So let's see what he did. Harry confirms he has been dating Meghan for months. Prince releases extraordinary statement attacking sex, 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 sexist <laughs> and racist abuse of his girlfriend and insists it's not a game, it's her life. And remember when she'd call the cops and they were like, what's going, there's nothing going on here? In the public eye, Harry's new girlfriend, Miss Markle, is pictured leaving her home in Toronto and Canada last Thursday where police and private security are now guarding. Their relationship was revealed less than a fortnight ago on October 30th. Really? They didn't need, 
she she even back then was using this. It was disgusting. Here's the statement he put out. I'm not going to read it, but if anybody wants to screenshot and read it, they can. I mean, it, it was ridiculous. November 23rd, Thanksgiving, and I'm thinking about the meal I once cooked for all my family. A huge turkey, like most of my movies. I thought she was vegan. Huh? Okay. Ha ha, today I'm feeling thankful for my career, my family, my swishy hair, my cute bottom. Not forgetting my ginger honey bunny who been I've been dating for six whole months. Oh my god. A new year and still going strong with Harry. This was February 1st, 2017. We had a date night at Soho House in London. The paparazzi caught us. Luckily, I looked super glam because she probably called them. I'm loving staying at Harry's apartment in Kensington Palace and pretending we're a married couple, which everyone is saying we will be before too long. Was hoping Kate might pop in for a cup of green tea, but no sign of her yet. What are we eating again? Cereal. Say again? <laughs> cereal. And am I tasting chicken? You're tasting fucking cereal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just really stressed. We're completely out of money. Maybe it's time we dip into your fortune from suits. There is no fortune from suits. <laughs> why are there so many people in our car? And why does it smell? It's not a car, Harry. It's a bus. <laughs> and it's not ours. This is public transportation. Right. And we're going to... <sighs> work. We're going to work, Harry, because HGTV canceled our show and we need money. So now <laughs> I'm going to my class and you're... Yes, yes. Going to my new job and you can't get work acting. So now you're teaching it, which kind of <laughs> makes sense and kind of doesn't. <laughs> so this one is being an actress comes in handy. Playing the perfect housewife. Do vegans usually eat turkey dinner? Hmm. And the paps. Love that part. February 5th. Still playing the perfect housewife. That's the great thing about being an actress. I can turn my hand to anything. And being so good at learning lines is great practice for all those royal speeches I might have to give one day. In the meantime, I've noticed Harry's pad has a bit of a bachelor vibe going on. So I'm filling it with flowers. Love my new barber jacket. Makes me look very posh in English. Like, you can see how her brain thinks, hey? Like, it's so, uh, she's so shallow. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like, just throws in there, oh, yeah, she loves her coat. Like, what? Holy moly. March 3rd. Harry asked me to go with him to his best friend's wedding in Jamaica. Everyone goes wild because there's a picture of my hand on Harry's back. But it's a bit awkward because Jamaica was where I married my ex-husband. A guy called Trevor. A guy called Trevor. Okay. Harry is totally cool about it, though. I mean, everyone in his family gets divorced. I know the last American divorcee who married a royal wasn't so popular, but hey, Wallace Simpson wasn't on TV and didn't have 1.6 million followers on Instagram. Wallace Simpson didn't have over a million subs on Instagram and pretending to like polo. So I just wanted to show a couple pictures of her and uh, Wallace and see how similar they look. Wow, they look actually extremely similar, don't they? Holy moly. And here too. Hey, it's, it's kind of crazy. Now this is funny. <laughs> like who oh my goodness that is crazy <laughs> may 7th princess training part 32 in which i pretend to be interested in polo all the men chase a ball with a giant hammer let's be frank it was boring as hell but at least it wasn't cricket things seem to be going well though i have this english style thing down just check out my dress looks like one of kate's don't you think Bad news, though, had to pull the plug on my blog. It was upsetting some of the suit stuff suits at the palace. No more selfies. What am I going to do? Like, she's so, oh, shallow, you guys. I can't even with her. So I also wanted to show this. It says, in 2017, Prince Harry brought his then-girlfriend Meghan as his date to his best friend's wedding in Montego Bay, Jamaica. 
Here's some souvenirs from the event. Event Megan sure enjoyed the wedding. Yeah, that was quite something her there, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. May 20th, Pippa's wedding today, and I joined Harry for the reception in a big greenhouse in a field. Brit, weddings are weird. When I get married, it will be totally glamorous with no muddy fields. Getting a bit bummed with other people's weddings, I mean, it's been practically a year. Overwhelming press, they've been handing me, handing me day and night. I can't please stand it. <laughs> All because I, I went out for ginger. <laughs> the power of the ginger. <laughs> It's overwhelming. Let me start again from the beginning on how I bagged my prints. With so much disinformation and misinformation out there, I did not want to go into this relationship with a preconceived idea of who he might be. <laughs> Doesn't everybody do at least a little research uh, informally on a prospective partner? What do I look like? A stalker? <laughs> you mean his cousin? You didn't even ask a few questions? I highly doubt his cousins would know if he was good in bed or his favorite position. <laughs> what did people do before the internet? At best looked in the phone book for their address. Not that I tried that tactic before. I am just saying. Is that credible? Is that even safe and <laughs> responsible? To go out with a man you don't know anything at all about and do nothing but take his word for whatever he wants to tell you. Um, I did ask if he was nice. <laughs> Doesn't that suffice in the vetting process? <laughs> Everything I needed to know, he shared with me. Or at least I thought he told me what to expect. <laughs> Does it really matter? I ended up getting the ring at the end. Why? <laughs> was there only one member, only one family member was invited? Were they all in conspiracies with paparazzi? Well, since I was not paying for the wedding, I was only allowed to invite one family member from my side. <laughs> okay. I wasn't going to abuse my husband's family's generosity and ask for my father to also get a VIP show ticket uh -huh. when knowing he could watch the spectacle on TV. <laughs> it would have been super rude to ask because I didn't know them or their financial situation. Yeah, okay. He lived so we're almost at the end, guys, but a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. June 11th. Awkward. So I'm at a script reading session at a TV festival in Texas when this random guy in the audience asks when I'm going to marry Harry. Jeez, I hope no. I hope people don't think I put him up to it. I just smile and say nothing. Still, I reckon 2018 will be a big year for hat sales in England. Okay. So I'm guessing she had a wonderful night. <laughs> Who needs leggings? A long night, me again? <laughs> Even there. Wow, this, this girl's busy. Uh, well, we know how uh, she got that ring on her finger, hey? <laughs> Black sweater, jeans, heels. We're in here. There's a piece of. Did you see it? The piece of blue fabric that's stitched inside. No. It's my something blue. It's my. It's oh, fabric how nice. from my. I hope it's still in there. Yes, we'll have to look at that. It's fabric from the dress that I wore on our first date. Okay, so I'm going to show you the moment the claw came into the picture, you guys. The first one. Yep. There it is. She says everyone goes wild because there's there's a picture of my hand on Harry's back. Yeah, that was from her um, diary. Yes, it was. Here with Harry's family, and we were, you know, having a dinner, which was so formal, and so we'd, like, bow and, like, eat with our mouths closed, <laughs> but they served fried chicken that day, and it was a direct attack. Like, I, as a black woman, no one was speaking up for me. And it was just such a systemically racist organization, but the queen was lovely. Serving fried chicken to a black woman is racism. It was just really hard when I was out there because no one asked how I was doing. <laughs> Hi from the future again. <laughs> I really hope you guys like that. That is some of my f most favoritest work. Um, that diary just blew me away. I, uh, 
I had to share it. And look at all the commercials we got, right? We'll have like 10 or 11, something crazy. Anyway, last chapter. What happened in Vancouver? Aiko's water cooler gossip, always the best. And there is some tea and a new blind. Okay, so again, my opinion allegedly, um, but this is something, again, came to my email. Again, you guys, these kind of things have been coming ever since they were in Vancouver. So I decided I'm just going to read it out to you and see what you think, because I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to read it. Explosive clash at Vancouver Airport. Harry and Rochelle's shocking encounter. In a recent incident at Vancouver Airport, the D&D &D of Sussex, uh, Harry and Rochelle found themselves embroiled in a heated, heated altercation that has captivated the media and left the public in disbelief. This royal, mm, you know, not to no good, has taken center stage, overshadowing, shadowing, the couple's intended participation in the prestigious Invictus Games event in Canada, founded oh yeah, okay, by Harry to honor wounded armed service personnel and veterans. The supposedly celebratory <clears throat> moment turned sour when an argument erupted between Harry and Rochel, reportedly triggered by Megan's demand. For a veteran to curtsy before her at the airport. Oh my god. Okay guys. the I accidentally erased some of the airport part. But all I had was an ad there. So I just put this picture there. Just for full transparency. Um, I didn't doctor anything. I just accidentally went over a couple things. But yeah. I wanted to show that she she just loved it when people would bow to her. I can't even believe people bowed to her. It's just disgusting. And then there's that picture on the bottom of her ridiculous curtsy to the queen. Okay, I'll go on. I can't believe she did this. The tension escalated to a point where Rochel allegedly scratched Harry's face in a fit of anger, drawing the attention of airport security and the staff who intervened to defuse the situation. So I put that, another ad was there. So I put that picture there because remember when I found that, you guys? Like, nobody was talking about it. And I'm like, what is that on his face? So I circled it. There's another picture out there with some marks on his neck, but I can't find it. So this, but yeah, so, and I heard so many times something happened. So anyways, the clash of egos and expectations between the royal couple, why do they keep saying that, quickly became a global sensation. Sparking debates among supporters and critics alike, Megan's advocates defended her right to respect as a member of the royal family. Are you kidding me right now? You're kidding me right now, right? The, the people that they supposedly hate now, you okay. While detractors criticized her for expecting special treatment from a veteran who had already sacrificed so much for their country. Yeah, and the fact that she is not a royal, oh my, 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 my. This incident reignited discussions about the evolving dynamics within the royal family. Really? Highlighting the growing tensions between Harry Rochel and the traditional protocols they're expected to, to adhere to. Um, no, there's no curtsying needed for these fools ever. My opinion. <laughs> While some view it as a treatment or a testament to Megan's resolve to challenge conventions and drive change, Within the monarchy, others see it as a rift deepening within the royal ranks. How is she at changing anything if she's insisting on curtsies and being called ma'am and all kinds of crap? Following the altercation, both Harry and Rochel issued statements expressing remorse for their actions, acknowledging the need for reflection and understanding. Someone said, leak Sussex big fight at Vancouver airport. Rochel clawed Harry's face because of curtsy that was from another i put another app but that was from another um article you guys like this is everywhere what what 
They apologized to the public and the veteran involved, reaffirming their commitment to using the experience as a platform to raise awareness about the challenges faced by veterans and service personnel. Really? To me, it would be uh, a completely different uh, topic, if you know what I mean, about people pushing other people around and acting all, I'm better than you. Buckingham Palace, known for its transparency, assured that a tr thorough investigation into the incident would be conducted with appropriate measures taken to address the matter. Really? Why? I thought they were separate from them. <laughs> what the... However, the fallout from the clash has strained the already intricate relationship between Prince Harry and the royal family, fueling speculations about a potential rift that could have long last or lasting repercussions. And then under there, you guys, I was like, what? Vancouver Airport leaked CCTV recording of Harry and Rochelle's massive fight. And I was the one who said the public deserves to see that footage, in my opinion. If there's footage out there, we deserve to see it, I think. But, wow. I don't know, have you guys heard this on any other channel? Because I don't really watch that much out there. And this has been, this just got posted again recently. But I know it was from Invictus. But, yeah, I just wanted to bring it to you guys. Because it kind of makes sense with the whole eye thing, you know. So this was on X. I'm just going to go over it real fast. Uh, Harry branded disrespectful towards women during Swiss ski trip where he spent night with teen eight years younger. No, he would have been 30, so... Uh, what? Says he spent the night with a teenager and made her sign an NDA about it, demanding it was the... T demanded it was the term used. He is a... Hashtag where's Harry and then hashtag... And they also have hashtag where's... <laughs> Marco going on, which I think is hilarious because that's like an F you. But I don't want to stay on this subject too long. I just wanted to just show you guys what's happening and we'll get to the blind item. So this was brand new as of taping. I don't know how new it'll be by the time you guys get it because <laughs> my husband has to had to slice and dice or whatever. Anyway, Blind item number eight. The ginger-haired one might have got a larger inheritance from Grandma than his brother, but it won't do the illiterate one any good unless she can pry it from him while they are still married. Perhaps a bigger marketing budget for the new company. Of course, some comments. But in the event of a divorce, doesn't all his money become joint assets? Money from an inheritance is not a joint asset. As long as finances aren't mingled... Well, we don't know about that. It belongs to the inheritor. Royalty makes sure that finances and inheritance are not mingled. Okay. It's one reason why Wallace had a king's random in jewelry. It, it was one of the few ways the Duke of Windsor could transfer money. I believe uh, I read that Anne is overseeing his trust for him. She'll never get past Anne. Inherited money is separate property. Unless, unless he buys something with it in both their names, she can't touch it. Let's hope he's not that dumb. That's why I thought she, they bought the McMansion, but I don't think they even own it. Their entire life is lies. No, they don't flip and own it. Oh, my. Oh, just a quick... Now, I'll let you know. Um, I have a new Sam coming. One I haven't put on my channel. It was two weeks ago. I must have missed it. So, I'm excited to watch that with you guys. But, anyways, we'll go on with these... <laughs> I still don't think they'll ever divorce. A malignant narcissist, as this one seems to be, won't let go of such a lucrative feeding trough. She has aged out of the billionaire honey market, while he'll remain a prince no matter the status of his dukedom. As of now, she has no other option but to stick around playing that one like a yo-yo, at least until she can tra trap another victim. He'll want to hand over whatever money he's got, as he seems to be a submissive, and this one seems to be... His money, Dom. That one is in a hell of his own choosing. And from what I've learned about the little cretin in the last few years, it's one he deserves. <laughs> I agree. I dare say Mego and Marcus have several juicy uh, ooh, videos, texts, and recordings in their arsenal. Enough to make the poodle perform as long as needed. The kiddos are the real golden ticket. And it'll cost big bucks to get them to England for schooling, etc. 
but it's also big bucks William will never pay if the king is passed. I feel like they'll take their cue from Fergie and Andrew since he seems to favor his uncle. <laughs> they'll probably do other things, sell their royal connections, but never divorce and then come back together when they realize no one wants them. I can see William's kids being more forgiving towards them like the king is with Fergie and Andrew. While Philip was around, she wasn't allowed. Someone said Charlotte's never going to forget how mean and nasty Megsy was to her, a three-year-old. I hope one day more people know what she did to that poor little girl. Same. Okay, last one, guys. Marketing budget, i.e. straight into me again's Delaware bank account, LOL. She's been wasting all his money to this point. Why wouldn't she be able to spend his inheritance too? Is there an age stipulation? As long as she keeps him drugged up, she's good. When the money for even that has all been spent on word salad farm, he'll finally have the rudest awakening of his life. And she'll be long gone with the kids, having full custody become a, because of his drug use. It sounds as if she's having to scrounge it off him. Uh, Sorry, does that say? Piecemeal? Sorry, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Remember, Judas Harry is notoriously tight-fisted with his own money. Oh, that kind of fell a little bit. Sorry, guys. That was a little bit of an oops at the end. Apologize for that. <laughs> oh, my. Okay, so we're going to watch Sam and laugh. And I'm going to thank you guys for spending some Easter with me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Okay? Please press like if you liked it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Tried to let us go. We did. It was getting difficult. <laughs> you tried to block our phone numbers. They're still blocked. <laughs> you tried to part ways with us. Yes, your company is grating. But the fact is, we're irresistible. Yeah, I face it. We're, we're box office, right? <laughs> you know, we're, we're controversial, which is a good thing because... You may hate us, you may love us, but you're watching. Which were the exact words used about you by Ted Santos, co-chief at Netflix. Yeah, I agree with Megan. Shocker. We've always been contraceptual because we push boundaries. You may love us, you might be an idiot, but you're always thirsty for the whinge and the ginge. The whinge? Yeah. The whinge and the ginge. It's just names that we're called sometimes. The whinge? The whinge. The whinge? The whinge? Well, I, I don't know who's who. I haven't really looked into it that deeply. I mean, what is it exactly that I ever whinge about? Well, well you know, for a start, being called a whinger. What? Yeah, 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 you're whinging now about being called a whinger. <laughs> ah, he's got you there, Megan. Right, can we just get back on with the interview, please? Uh, and in fact, I sense there's a very important question coming. Well, as perceptive as ever, Megan, which is doubly impressive because you've also retained your previous levels of self-deprecation and good humour. <laughs> oh, thank you. I wanted to ask why. Why do you think the public are so interested in you? You are indeed far more successful at capturing the public's attention than your personalities and capacities would suggest. But why? Now, I think it's all about relatable luxury, right? You know, they want the megastar who, like, you know, eclipses everything going on in their worthless and meaningless lives. But they want them to come across as you know, genuine and, like, you know, authentic. Yeah, because we touch every hot button issue, you know? Climate change. We're on it. Yes, it being a private jet, of course. <laughs> Mental health epidemic, we're there. Driving everyone crazier still, indeed. <laughs> Gender inequality, we're on it. As a hen-pecked eunuch and a self-deluded floozy. No, I agree with everything you're saying, Harry. And why do you think the result, you know, popular? Well, I think it's because you so perfectly typify everything wrong with the modern world. You are unrelenting in your support of all the worst policies. You are impenetrably privileged, yet shameless in portraying yourself as victims, which is an absolute modern classic. You use made-up modern words and terminology, 
court the rich whilst superficially championing the poor. <laughs> you are intent on ruining the fun of everyone around you, particularly you, Megan. You underthink, yet overspeak. <laughs> you overvalue narrative, yet undervalue evidence. And you worship narcissistic feelings whilst denigrating common sense as morally wrong and outdated. Yeah, I think you're popular because you perfectly represent a microcosm of the very worst that the modern West has become. Thank you.